Well, I'm Chris Pope. I'm back in the studio again with another awesome actor. This is Robert Clotworthy. Robert, Hello. thanks. Thanks so much for coming in today, <laughs> man. You. It's it's absolute pleasure to have you with us in the studio. We're super excited. So um, I wanted to start out by just mm -hmm. asking a couple of things. Mm -hmm. First off, um, how in the world did you wind up in? I'm asking you basically the same question I ask everybody. How did you wind up in the studio with uh, doing what you do day in and day out? Other than filming the fact that you called my agent and booked me, <laughs> yeah, well, and yeah. you decided to pay me some money. Um, <laughs> actually, I started working professionally when I was still in high school. My father was a producer of television, actually radio commercials. So I got to go with him when I was a kid into the studio to see recording sessions. And I absolutely fell in love with the aspect of being an actor and going into the recording booth and creating a character. And I saw all the great voice actors of my childhood, uh, you know, whether Mel Blanc or Dawes Butler or June Ferre. I was actually in the recording studio watching them do their things and doing their cartoon characters. And uh, it just amazed me. And I absolutely fell in love with it. And Fortunately, I was able to, when I started acting professionally, get into more and more voiceover to where now it's pretty much my, my main gig. Yeah, you are You are in, I was telling Mark, uh, your IMDb page is like a mile long. I mean, you've been in so many things. You've, you've worked with so many people. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, the first, I guess, big major star that I worked with, that wasn't in voiceover, but it was a, in a commercial, was Peter Sellers. Mm -hmm. I actually did a if you can believe it, a television commercial with Peter Sellers. I worked with uh, uh, Charlton Heston, uh, Kathleen Turner, uh, Clint Eastwood. I, 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 you name it, uh, it's, yeah. it I've, I've, I've been there. Quite the career. <laughs> yeah, I'm very, very lucky. Diane Keaton, who, who we were talking about yeah, earlier yeah. today, yeah. Yeah, and then you've, you've kind of made your way into voiceover, but you, you just flip flop, flip flop back and forth, right? You, you do both, really. Yeah, I mean, I started out um, doing, doing on-camera stuff, especially mm -hmm. doing on-camera commercials. Did a lot of those as a kid, and then I was in all those shows from the 1970s that were on the air, uh, you know, Emergency and MASH and Columbo and uh, Rockford Files, all those, all those shows, mm -hmm. and... It was it was fun, but uh, you know what's funny is when I think about it, I started out at 15, 16 years old, and was successful right away. I mean, literally the first audition that I went on, I booked. So it was off to the races. You're probably like, oh, this is easy. This well, yeah, I mean, just go in and book every. Uh... Yeah, I, I, got, I got my fir first one. I got my third one. I got my fifth one. It was like uh -huh. I thought, okay, every other job you audition for, you're going to get. Uh -huh. uh, Later on, I realized that was That's not, the, not, way not the way it works. <laughs> but what I was going to say is that I had a, a lot of fun doing that as a kid. Imagine, you know, all of a sudden, you know, everybody else is slinging burgers, and I'm, you know, working on on TV shows. Mm -hmm. And but I'm actually having more fun now, as as definitely an adult, mm -hmm. <laughs> than I did when I was a kid. And as a kid, it was it was an incredible amount of fun. So wow. it's it's a as I like to tell people, we as as performers get to play in the sandbox. I mean, we're, whatever age you're at, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, whatever, if you're an actor, you're playing pretend. Yeah. And you get to go in there and just be be a kid. And yeah. it's, uh, it's, a, it's a ton of fun. And you're busy, too. Like, you're yeah. one of those yeah. actors yeah. that yeah. Yeah. just yeah. about every day you've got something going on. That's great to hear. Yeah, not, knock, on, knock on wood. <laughs> it's been, uh, it, I've been very, very blessed. I can't say that it's... Uh, you know, phenomenal talent that's got me through. But I, I guess I was good enough. I was in the right uh, place at the at the right time. And you know, especially as as a kid, I looked a certain way, so they were able to hire me and plug me into into characters. And uh, with voiceover, one of the nice things about voiceover is that the people that are doing it. I know you've had Rob Paulson in here. You've had mm -hmm. Maurice Lamarche. Uh, the people that are successful in voiceover, the ones that are are working all the time, are phenomenal actors. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the interesting aspects of doing voiceover is that because it's just a microphone, because it's just your voice, uh, and there's no face to hide behind, uh, that it's basically just the one sense that you're basically putting out there. Mm -hmm. If you're not being truthful, meaning uh, if you're not coming from a place where as an actor you're speaking the truth, uh, 
the microphone detects that. Yeah. And they knows that they know the people will instinctively know that there's something wrong. That it's, it's, it's. Yeah. You're, they're not just. They're not buying it. Yeah. You can so, hear it. It sounds fake. Yeah. yeah. It sounds uh -huh. fake. So I call it a great BS detector. So the people <laughs> that are really successful are phenomenal actors. Mm -hmm. To be successful in voiceover, you really have to be a good actor. Yeah, you got to be able to act. Uh, yeah. That's what everybody. All, all, all people ask that all the time. They'll, it, like conventions and stuff, people will say, "Well, you know, I want to get into voice acting. How do I do it?" And, and my answer to that, and you probably mm -hmm. would agree, would be, "Get acting classes. <laughs> yeah, go to an acting <laughs> class. Learn how to act." Right. Good. Acting is for. Oh, I do a great, you know, uh, Keith or Sutherland or something. You yeah. Know, well. Yeah, you can do a great, uh, you know. Pinky or, or right, or, but the thing is that job's taken. You know, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Rob created that. You've got to, you've right. got to create your own. Right. And right. I remember, you know, Rob. I've known him for, goodness, forty plus years. Mm -hmm. He was always curious about voiceover. He was always working on an accent, always and, mm -hmm. and having fun with it. I mean, mm -hmm. and that's critical. That's critical mm -hmm. to enjoy yourself while while you're doing that. Yeah. Because that that that's where you get really really good. You know, you yeah. have that passion. Yeah. Well, you've definitely landed some great characters mm -hmm. in, in, in film and, and in the voice acting world. I know, I know for one, uh, uh, us gamers out there mm -hmm. would, would know you as um, Jim Rayner from StarCraft. Um, can, you, can you give us a little Jim Rayner? Well, I know, first of all, I know that, that there's usually a cognitive disconnect when people see me, <laughs> when they compare me to Rayner because I'm in so much better shape than he is. <laughs> right. uh, but yeah, I mean, it's interesting because... I started working with uh, with that character in that game back in 19, I guess 97, because yeah, it, came, it Star came out in 98. Yeah. And when you think about as an actor, you know, we usually work day to day. You know, maybe mm -hmm. we get a job the last couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months. But to have a job that goes from 98 to 2018, that's what yeah. I can't even do the math. I mean, it's, it's right. too many numbers. I, I, 20 plus years when Blizzard has only been around for 25. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's rare, and when I was working with Chris and we were discovering the character, um, I know they wanted to give a little bit of a, of a southern feel mm -hmm. to that. And since half of my family is is from the south, it was very natural for me to go there. So with Jimmy, he's he's uh, I just pitch it down a little bit. Uh, I know that he's not the kind of guy that gets would get really. Angry and vocally angry. He, mm -hmm. he his 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 anger is a little bit more of a simmering. So it was just kind of a, um, you know, some things are just worth fighting for. You know, it's just there's just an intensity mm -hmm. to him and, and just a simplicity to what it is that he's saying. He's not a complicated guy. Mm -hmm. Maybe in a complicated situation, but he's a pretty simple person. Mm -hmm. And that I think was one of his 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 strengths, but also you know. Like the dual edge of the sword, it's also his weaknesses as well. But I also understood that um, that character was what his role was in the greater arc of the story right. of, of StarCraft. That he was, you know, to steal from Joseph Campbell, kind of the the reluctant hero, mm -hmm. not a guy who was seeking out there to or going out there to change the world. Circumstances drew him into a situation that he didn't want to want to be in. And uh, he, w he was obviously, obviously tested. And what's also nice about him, and what I think people can identify with, is that he's just like you or I. He's not a superhero. He doesn't have a special skill other than just his ability to figure out how, how to get out of a situation. Mm -hmm. he's, he's got a lot of faults. He's, you know, he smokes cigarettes. He drinks too much. He's, <laughs> uh, but at his core, he's, he's that... That guy that, um, if you needed him in your corner, he'd be there. Mm -hmm. So he's he's very loyal, and I think that uh, a lot of fans have identified with him and have also come up to me and said how impactful the character was mm -hmm. in their lives when they were going through a difficult time. Right, and they would think, what would Rainer do? Exactly, and it, yeah. it found them a little bit of strength. So as as a performer, I also understood the importance that the character was not just to the story, but to the people that were playing the game mm -hmm. and so I took my uh, role very seriously and I wasn't going to phone it in I was going to do my very best to kind of convey my own uh, passion 
and my own truth, my own experience as, as, as a person, and, and let that character live. I know that when mm -hmm. I wor worked with Andrea uh, Romana, who mm -hmm. was the director of the, not the first game, but the StarCraft II, yeah. who was an you know, Emmy Award winning uh, a director, one of the, probably the best animation yeah. director yeah. that- She's that directed everybody. Everybody, she's now retired, but was amazing. Yeah. And the first day I, I was on the, uh, the recording studio with her, I said, keep me honest because that's what I wanted more than anything else, and mm -hmm. she did. Mm -hmm. Now on top of uh, you doing a ton of video games mm -hmm. and stuff, you, you've also, you can hear your voice on all kinds of different shows. You're, you're narrating a couple of series. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, I'm doing three shows right now. They're all on the History Channel. It seems like I'm kind of the voice of, of the History Channel, <laughs> which is Ancient Aliens, the Curse of Oak Island and the Curse of Civil War Gold, and um, they're all hugely popular. And people ask me all the time how I got into narration, and uh, it's it's something that I was always interested in as a kid. I would read out loud. I remember with with friends or girlfriends or whatever. I would I'd like to read books out loud, and I was always challenging myself to see if I could read it without having, you know, read it out loud without having read it before. Right. And not only be able to say, get the words out, but to give some kind of interpretation. So it's, the challenge was, was I able to get to that period that's at the end of the sentence? So you kind of, one eye has to go and, and look ahead. <laughs> well, one eye is looking at, at the word that you're saying. Right. So you kind of have to anticipate and figure out where you're going. Yeah. But it was fun for me. Uh -huh. And, you know, you're not getting paid for doing that. But it was a challenge I, I set for myself. And we talk about how to, how to become a good actor, how to, how to do voiceover. Part of it is that you have to have this, this love for it. Mm -hmm. So you have to challenge yourself. And you have to get those skills because you never know when those skills are going to come uh, going to be, be necessary for the job. And for the show now, for all the shows that I do when I narrate them, I never look at the script in advance. Mm -hmm. I don't want to know what's going on because I see myself as a person that's like the audience. I want to be, I want to be, um, I want my reaction to be natural to what I, when I see it the first time. So right. if they say, you know, in the show, you know, Ancient Aliens, uh, we may say we now have visual proof that aliens have landed. If, if that's new to me, it's going to be new to the audience. Right. So I want that excitement, whatever that, that feeling may be, to be part of what it is that uh, when, I, when I say the words. So I think that that helps with the audience kind of relating to me and why it's become so, uh, so popular. Yeah. I'm not going to take all the credit, but <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take a portion of it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Well, speaking of uh, giving your um, exact your reactions mm -hmm. in the booth while you're reading some of this stuff, we uh, we really we were getting a kick out of you reading some of the copy from the game for the very first time. Yeah, yeah we've we've read it a bunch of times and kind of gotten used to the humor, but uh, you kept cracking up. You'd stop. You were reading in the booth some of the the writing, and you would just stop to crack yeah, up for yeah. a minute and. Uh, what did you What did you think about some of the writing that was? In well, the... I I, re I really enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, was wonderfully written. It was not what I was expecting at all, which is <laughs> always fun as an actor to, right. to be surprised. Right. Um, and the the words, you know, it Rec was it was it, it, it was a, it was a little bit of a of a challenge. Rectilinear seepage. Yeah, and... <laughs> because it, it's like I have no idea what I'm what I'm talking about. But right. at the same time, I understood what my role was and you need to you know for that particular right. character i need to sell it i need right, to be right. the guy that's selling whatever this nonsense is <laughs> exactly yeah. so it was it was so it, it it took it to the point of where i love it as an actor it makes things so absurd that it's uh, to me and then to, to try to bring it back to reality to so make the absurd real to me i find incredibly amusing so i was really enjoying myself and also you know other actors may go in there and and, and panic all like, oh my goodness, all these words, how can I, how can I get this out? <laughs> For me, it was like, no, I was loving it. Right. And I was, I was appreciative of the fact that I get to say these words, how lucky I was right. to be able to, and could I pull it off? Right. I, you know, I know, you know, you know, you give me enough time in the booth, I'll yeah, probably yeah. get, you know, 80% of the way there, and that may be enough for, for, to make everybody happy. 
but it was so precious, so funny, so clever, and uh, it, it was it was a joy, and it makes the time just go by quicker. Right. By, by quick, quicker. What is that? That's like a word from <laughs> That's the, a word from the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> by quickly. <laughs> Right. Well, no, you did a phenomenal job. We had a great time yeah. uh, with you in the booth. And I, I know the feeling. I have a small part in the game, too, uh -huh. where I play uh, the Space Pope. And um, it's <laughs> oh, I love it. it's, it's uh, the, the stuff that was written for the Space Pope. They probably, uh -huh. Luckily, the engineer and, and director were all very patient with me. But I had to say things like sometimes six or seven times before, uh, before I could get it right, just because of the amount of, of uh, wordplay that's coming yeah. at you there. But well, yeah. it's it, people don't don't appreciate, and they shouldn't appreciate necessarily what what good voice acting is because it should seem effortless. When you hear it, it's like, oh, okay. Right. You know, when you hear a cartoon character, it's, it's you're not thinking, oh, it's such so challenging what he's doing. Mm -hmm. You know, from another voice actor may be able yeah. to to look at it yeah. like a singer would appreciate a you know, the technique of somebody. Yeah. If you have to think about how hard the voice acting was while you're listening to it, it kind of draws you away from what you're listening to. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I had an acting coach that uh, told me once she saw Shelley Winters at a, at a party, and this is not a dig on Shelley Winters because she was a, an amazing actress, but she saw Shelley Winters, you know, holding court mm -hmm. while at this party. And she, in her mind, she was thinking, I can see the work. Mm -hmm. So as an actor or as a, you, you never want to show the work. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you, you want it to appear effortless. You want it to appear right. easy. And, uh, and that's what allows the audience just to kind of get into to what's happening. Yeah, no, exactly. And if they see you working too hard, then, then, then they know something, something's wrong. Sure. Yeah, no, definitely. And they feel uncomfortable unless, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, do you have anything you're working on now you'd like to plug or not mention? Not a darn thing. Not a darn thing. <laughs> not, not a darn thing. <laughs> I'm not working on anything. <laughs> no, it's a, I continue to work on... Uh, Curse of Oak Island, uh, the Curse of Civil War Gold, Ancient Aliens. We're, we're starting to do more and more of these uh, alien cons around yeah. the country. So I know we're going to, we just finished one in uh, Pasadena in June. We're going to be in Baltimore in, yeah. in November. I think we're coming back out in the West Coast in the spring. So we're going to be doing more and more of those. The show's no sign of slowing down any yeah. of those shows. I know that Curse of Oak Island is the most popular show on History Channel. And Ancient Aliens is just taken off as like a phenomenon. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the new, uh, oh, uh, Fire Emblem Heroes. I don't even know if you knew this. No, I didn't. I, I play the Black Knight in Fire Emblem Heroes, which is the video game that's out. Cool. Um, it was in recently in The Incredibles 2. I'm in, I'm in that. Um, there's So there's always something coming yeah. up. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate in that regard, and knowing that I've got all these narration gigs that are going to go for the next... Yeah. For a while, as I, as I, yeah, as they <laughs> say, keeps me busy. Yeah, you don't feel like you're you're completely out of work after a gig. And you, I got this actually, video game coming out. That's right. It's got some amazing yeah. actors in it. See him in Space Venture. Space Venture. That's yes. It. Well, Robert, thank you so much for coming on. Chris, I really appreciate it. Thank man. you. Thank you. Pleasure, my friend.